All right, you beautiful, beautiful people, listen up. Every one of you is uniquely talented at something, all right? Look in yourself and find what it is that drives you and motivates you. And uh, if you're not good at designing websites, please use Squarespace. That's squarespace.com. Squarespace allows you to create simple and easy, beautifully designed, professional-looking websites for as little as $8 a month, and that includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. You don't need to know anything about computers. They have drag-and-drop content, 24-7 live support via chat and email, completely responsive design, and they can also build online stores for you. Every site comes with an online store feature. It's great, it's easy, it's simple. You don't have to know shit to build shit anymore, okay? The days of knowing how to do stuff and then doing it are over. You got that? You can be dumb and still get shit done. And if you go to squarespace.com slash if I were you and use our coupon code if I were you, you can get an extra 10% off your first purchase. There, that's it. That's all I got to say. Please, please enjoy this episode. Things get a little bit musical. Things get very real. And I think overall, overall you'll be happy. So please continue listening. Thank you for your support. Uh, we still have tickets available to our show in London. We're bringing the podcast there. We're also doing a live sketch and stand-up show with Streeter, uh, both on the same day, Monday, September 8th. Uh, you can go to our website uh, or jakenamir.com for more information. All right, let's get started. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> that they had to seize the cheese. <laughs> That's what's the man. I love bread. <laughs> you don't want to just be a candy coat of peanuts. Yeah, wow. Oda. Oda. <laughs> you got to earn this booty. I get away with everything. Nothing bad ever happened to Jake Brett Fields, everyone. Brett Fields. Brett Fields, ladies and gentlemen. That was a cappella, which means he did all the, the music with his mouth and the singing with his anus. What? Yeah. Ha. I guess he was able to shape his anus in a way that sang words whilst he farted. Crazy. Insane. I love it. I think liking a cappella is one of the uh, more embarrassing th- opinions that I have. You really love a cappella. Yeah, it's funny and it's fun. And- and it's entertaining, and I like the way it sounds. That's I can't make fun of you because that was so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, and it's fun, and it's entertaining, and I like the way it sounds. Yeah. I like the way you are. <laughs> hey, this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the interweb. I'm Amir. What? Oh, shit. I was still early. <laughs> <laughs> Hosted by us. I'm Amir. What? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm Jake. Um, just to confuse the people who are tuning in for the first time. <laughs> They'll never get it again. Uh, that oh, did I already said it was Brett, Brett Fields. Fields. Yeah, of course. Okay. So, obviously. Singing with his anus. Yeah. As always. As always. So how does this show work? Good question. We get emails from people that are seeking advice, and we try to answer those emails. Holy shit. So succinct. <laughs> what just happened? How, what did we use to say? <laughs> it's forever Whatever changed. needs to be said. It's different now. <laughs> the email address is if I were you show at gmail.com. Let's get started. Uh, oh, we also opened. Come on, it. Okay. dick. <laughs> we were there. Uh, uh, okay. Theme songs, yeah. We'll do that at the end. We'll call for them at the end. All right, dude. all right, all right, all right, all right. Come on. First one. We're right getting right, right into bat. it. Yeah. We were getting right into it. And you ruined it. Finally. Uh, Hey guys! Oh wait, who's this email from? Oh, uh, oh, of course we all know uh, this gentleman from this famous. <laughs> this one is from Ringo. Ringo writes, 
Hey guys, love the show. Nice. <laughs> uh, 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 shit. So I went to my senior prom a few days ago with my girlfriend of two months. At the dinner before the prom, she was very passive and wouldn't really talk. At the prom, she ditched me to go talk to her friends for three hours. When I asked if she wanted to dance, she said, not right now. After the prom, she went back to her friend's house without me. So here's my question. Should I break up with her? I spent over $300 on this whole prom deal. She's been really different and weird recently. I'm fully willing to drop her like a hot potato. And if I should break up with her, then how should I do it? Love, Ringo. Um... He should break up with her, right? Well, she did go to prom with him, but then wouldn't talk to him, wouldn't dance with him, and wouldn't leave with him. Right. I think, at the very least, you guys could have a discussion about <laughs> what happened. What the fuck went down? It's so weird when people like email relationship questions that are so like, what is the relationship that you feel like you can't say... <laughs> Hey, why are you uh, being like this to yeah. me? <laughs> Imagine if you woke up one day and uh, you had a significant other where you spoke to her. She wouldn't respond. Then she went to a dance with you, wouldn't talk to you, wouldn't dance with you, and left without you. I would be so heartbrokenly right. confused. But, like, you would – wouldn't you say something? Yeah. Be like, like, what should I do? <laughs> Fucking talk to her. What's going on right now? What, are you just waiting for our response? <laughs> tell her – tell her what happened was bad. Tell yeah. her – you spent – that's the other thing. He spent money. Like, you should – maybe she doesn't realize that. I think you could have a little conversation about that. Like, hey, look – uh, it's not just my feelings. I actually in- invested cash in this whole thing. Right. So, uh, you know, I bought you a corsage and then you stomped on my heart. I uh, paid your share of the limo and you left with your friends. And, um, you know, I bought your ticket and your meal and you wouldn't eat or sit with me. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. I don't think we should be going out. Not that she owes him anything sexually. That's... Right, of course, of course. (laughs) But she does owe him a friendly attitude. Well, if they're in a committed, loving relationship, she owes him an explanation if she's going to split. Yeah. I wonder what he thought when that happens. It's like, oh, that's weird. She's not dancing with me, and now she's leaving without me. I feel a fool. What should I do? How should I break up with her? How do I play? You don't ha- like, yeah, there's no specific way you have to break up with her. No one's saying you have to break up with her. It sounds like your relationship is uh, non existent. weird. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you have to at least uh, communicate when you're feeling uh, when you're feeling down in the dumps. Yeah. Especially when it's uh, due to something that uh, she made you feel by ignoring you at prom. Well, this is a high schooler, so it's like. The reason it sounds so weird to us is because if this is your first relationship, you don't know how things work. Is this normal? How does one break up? Why does one break up? That's true. You're feeling each other out. Yeah, you're learning. learning each other up. (laughs) (laughs) Um, You should just have a discussion with her. That's how it all works. You say, I feel this way. Yeah. Um, Not because of any... And you you don't want to project feelings on her. You don't want to be like... I feel this way because you're being a bitch. But you would say, uh, the, what I perceived to happen at prom was that I felt ignored. I felt slighted. I felt uh, that you were pushing me away. It makes me feel lonely, small, sad, and to be honest, a little coy. <laughs> you always feel coy. <laughs> I often feel coy. Uh, and then she may say, well, the reason I was pushing you away is because blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, you know, a million reasons. But the important thing is to not enter any, any discussion with an expectation of how she's supposed to make you feel and or an, exp- an expectation of what's going to be the outcome. You know, you don't, all you can do is communicate your feelings honestly and openly and, to be honest, coyly. <laughs> <laughs> Curly and coyly. Uh, if he should break up with her, then how should he do it? Well, I think that the conversation may lead to breaking up. He says, I felt this way. And she says, I don't care how you feel. Maybe you say, okay, well, um, I don't want to be with someone who doesn't care how I feel. Yeah. You always want to be with someone that cares how you feel. That's like one of the basic ones. That's like one of the first things to build the relationship. That might be the only one that really, really matters. Yeah. And also like. Sex should be dope. Yeah, yeah. Like, and also if the person's hot. So I yeah. guess the three pillars are: if the person's hot, 
if you if connect the, sexually. Yeah, if the sex is dope, and then also like if they care about how you feel. Right. That that it's those three in itself can last you a year or two even at that point. Two years of a lifetime, buddy. Yeah. Trust and, us. And then once you once you get past that point, then you can discuss other things like uh, values and uh, how to raise a family and stuff like Just inconsequential so shit like that. Um. Remember our idea, or the idea of this episode of uh, singing a song about every question once we're done answering it? Yeah, yeah. Do you still want to do that? Yeah, yeah. So, so we had the idea of, it's either terrible or good, we're about to find out, but after every uh, answer that we give this episode, we'll improvise a song about it. Okay. Should we improvise, like, the situation, like, what ha- like basically make a song out of the question, or make a song out of the answer? Oh, interesting. What were you thinking? I guess I was going to just start with the premise of the question and then like go from there. Okay. That all was, right. That was all I had gotten. Are we both going to sing or are you going to play and I'm going to sing? Um, uh, well, let's, why don't we, let's both, let's, we'll both sing. Okay. But you can, I'll let you start the song. Okay. Um, <laughs> do you, I would just like, I need a little bit of direction in yeah. terms of, do you want it to be sort of like, um, you know what? I'm just going to feel this out. <laughs> All right, here we go. This song is by Ringo, and it's called uh, Hey, What Happened at Prom? Hey, Meredith, what happened at prom? I thought it was wrong. You left me high and dry. Oh, Meredith, you did me wrong. All I want to do is talk to you. You didn't have to touch my dog. Meredith. Oh, Meredith. <laughs> How do I break up with you? Meredith. This is actually really <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it's easy. All I have to do is communicate with you and tell you that you don't respect my feelings or my space or how I talk to you. You ditched me. What the hell is wrong with you? Meredith, I'm 17 and I don't get how shit works or means. I can't understand what you mean to me. So Meredith, understand that I should say goodbye. You couldn't have chosen a better name than Meredith. <laughs> it's really hard to rhyme stuff with Meredith. Yeah, for some people. Fine. So Meredith. <laughs> uh, I'll give that one a B minus. Not a complete fail. It sounded sort of like a Dave Matthews song. Yeah, that's kind of my uh, yeah. my 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 inspiration. Well, luckily we have three more to get through. Cool. Um, all right. This one is from somebody. This email is from somebody we'll call George. George writes, Hey guys, one of my coworkers recently has gone sick, hospitalized with heart issues, breathing tube, the whole shebang. He's only 45 or 50, but he's a large dude, so that could be the cause of the problems. Since he's gone, I've inherited most of his work to complete, as we don't know how long he'll be in the hospital for, or if this could even lead to him dying. My issue is his work is totally fucked up. I'm sitting here trying to make sense of everything he had done before he left, and I'm noticing errors and mistakes left and right. My first instinct is to tell him what he's doing wrong. I've compiled a list of all the things that I want to correct him on, but the further down I get on the list, the more I think about how inappropriate it might be to ask him uh, to go to him about these issues the first day he's back from the hospital and tell him that I had to go and redo most of the things he had done. I feel bad for this guy, and I obviously hope he gets better and whatnot. But does he get exempt from learning from his mistakes because of what he's going through? I'm not sure if I should correct this dude or not. Love, George. Fuck you, George. Why? Fuck, George. (laughs) Why? I'm I'm, I'm thinking how inappropriate it might be. How inappropriate it is. (laughs) No. It is inappropriate to visit a dying guy in the hospital and say he's tell him he's doing his work wrong. No, he's not going to visit him. He's going to wait till he's back the first day. He said how. No, he said how inappropriate it might be to go to go to him the first day he's back from the hospital and tell him that to go to re and redo most of the things he had done. Sorry. First day back. Excuse me. <laughs> he's not going to barge into his hospital room That's what with I was a thinking. stack of papers. That's what I was thinking. Okay, let's say this guy's back from the hospital. Then is it okay? Um, 
I don't know. You don't have to wait. You don't have to be doing it the first day. I wouldn't. I don't know. I think there's probably a a more polite way to play this. Oh, Meredith. Oh, Meredith. <laughs> I think, yeah, you keep a, you maybe don't hand him a list of all the mistakes he's made, but do what you can do. It's your job now to handle his work, so fix it, because yeah. that's your job. And when he gets back, you could say, hey, I want to talk to you about these uh, the way you do this. It's not necessarily right. But if, also, if it hasn't affected you up until this point, does it, I, I don't know. I don't know what it's like to have a real job. <laughs> <laughs> what are what's, paper? What's, what's paperwork? What's wrong? It's like uh, the the graphs and the charts are 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 uh, weird. <laughs> the the slides that you put on what's that thing? The projector you put a transparent yeah. slide and it goes on the board. The uh, the reports are in error. Yeah. The there's the, no cover sheet or something. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have real work to do. I talk. I do is I do a podcast and then Amir puts the puts the words on the internet <laughs> and you hear it and I hear it and that's that's all I do. Yeah. Is that what you did wrong or did he do that incorrectly? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Everyone has a me. podcast, right? Oh. George, um here's what I would do. Maybe not the right thing to do, but since this show is called If I Were You, if I were you, I would uh, talk to your boss about it, then you never have to uh, communicate with the sick guy. That's the correct answer. But it's not really nice because it's like telling on him. Yeah, I like think... the good thing, the the nice thing to do would be to just fix the mistakes for this guy and not get him in trouble. But in but what I would do is just tell his boss. Well, in theory, you guys have the same boss if you're doing the same work. It all depends, I guess. You just have to like. That's the, that's the answer to every question in the world. <laughs> it all depends, I guess. All right, pick up that guitar. <laughs> it all depends, I guess. This uh, podcast just devolves into us singing songs. It's not called If I Were You Anymore. It's called It All Depends, I Guess. <laughs> we just read a question and go, it all depends, I guess. All right, now we got to play that song. <laughs> 45 minutes. Meredith. Uh, yeah, like, well, why are you going to get him in? Don't get him in trouble. Maybe you could, like, do the do this work and then when he gets back you tell the boss like oh i noticed like some of these were erroneous uh maybe you could communicate the the better way to do this going forward but i don't think he gets exempt because his heart's bad well yeah it sounds like he doesn't know how to live his life healthily or do his work properly yeah maybe you should be dead <laughs> oh meredith <laughs> maybe you should be dead if you're too fat Take care of yourself Maybe you should be dead <laughs> If you're too stupid To get your work done Then maybe You should be dead Maybe you should be named Ted But you're not Your name is Meredith Everybody's name is Meredith In oh, my song Meredith <laughs> Get your shit together. Make sure that it's in order so other people don't have to help you out. No need to scream and shout. I'm not gonna pout when you pass away. Because today we're gonna have to hire someone else to fix your mistakes. Worse than the first one. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> I know, Sant. Uh, <clears throat> do we have anything left to tell this guy? Um, no, I think it depends, I guess. Yeah, it depends, I guess. I say tell your boss. That way you don't have to deal with it. And I say try a little harder to read the situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it's all relative. And it kind of depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I need to know some more factors. Yeah. You're drinking arsenic right now. That's fair. Um, all right. Third question. Uh, John, have we used? No. John writes. But John wasn't a beetle. <laughs> we did George and Ringo. <laughs> John Lennon. Oh. <laughs> You only know two of them. I only know the two famous ones, I guess. <laughs> I wouldn't call George the famous one. Yeah, well, the three famous Beatles. All right, sure, here there we go. There are three Beatles. 
My <clears throat> ready? There are three Beatles. <laughs> there are John, George, and Ringo. Ringo Starr. <laughs> yes, of course, Ringo Starr. <laughs> right. There's also a fourth. No, All right. Not. Here's my situation. My ex girlfriend and her friend, let's call her M, were talking about their sex lives and they reached the topic of orgasms. M told my ex that she never had an orgasm and asked if she would find someone to give her one. My ex asked me if I would have sex with a friend because she knows I would give her an orgasm. My ex and I ended on pretty bad terms, and although we get along okay now, I still have a layer of hatred towards her, for lack of a better term. So I guess what I'm asking is, what do I do? Is it acceptable for me to have sex with my ex's friend based on her recommendation, even though I don't really like my ex? Her friend is a 9 out of 10 if that changes anything. Thanks in advance. Love, John. So if you hated your ex and she asked you to have sex with her friend, would you? I think one of the big factors here is does the friend want to? Yeah. Cause Why she, isn't she coming to you? Because she doesn't know this guy. She asked her friend to get a guy for her that would give her an orgasm. Okay. And she's like, oh, my ex would give you an orgasm. Well, ladies, you don't need a guy to give you an orgasm. You should buy a rabbit if that's if you're curious. <laughs> I would say get a vibrator and hold it against your clitoris, and you may discover you can have an orgasm without needing to go to your friend's ex-boyfriend. That's all I'll say. Um, What? (laughs) Secondly, huh? Secondly, why is – I don't under – okay. I think if you hate your ex – yeah. You wouldn't want to be doing her any favors. Even you want favors. to leave her. You want to leave that circle. Yeah. You want to. You want to remove yourself from that situation, and engaging in sexual acts at her behest thrusts you right back into the whirlwind of that relationship and complicates your life thusly. So, ergo, therefore, here to art thou. I would say, <laughs> Kagito ergo sum. Uh, no, do not do that. Even if it means boning a 9 out of 10, baby! Uh, yes. This is your first time I've ever heard you give advice. Anti-sex. I think advice anti... I always give advice anti-X. Pro-sex, anti-X. <laughs> Anti-X trumps all sex. Really? You understand? Yes. Anti-X trumps all sex. I don't think you should ever be fucking your exes. I feel like I've said that before. I think I'll go on record saying it now. But oh wait, but this isn't this isn't sleeping with an ex. It's too close to it. It's it's sex involving the ex and I think that's uh that's next. <laughs> what? Next question, I think. <laughs> well, I think pro sex anti ex is a good name of a song. <laughs> I'm pro-sex, but anti-ex. To you I say next, don't give me that hex. I don't want to be vexed. Pro-sex, but anti-ex. So don't give me that hex. I swear I don't need that vex. So I want to say to you, find someone else to fuck that Jew. Is she Jewish? I assume she was. Cause I named her Emma, which sounded because, oh, I'm pro-sex. I'm pro-sex, but anti-ex. So give me that sex. Toda, everybody. <laughs> I thought this song was going to be an instrumental, but you came in. It was good. What? An instrumental? Yeah, I feel like sometimes the question uh, begs for an, uh, an instrumental an instrumental ballad. <laughs> an instrumental ballad, indeed. I can barely hear your guitar. How would that be instrumental? It would be kind of quiet, kind of cool, kind of chill, kind of lax and a little bit coy. <laughs> it's always coy with you. Uh, what I would do in this situation is also uh, not do it because I'd be afraid to um, 
uh, sleep with someone who didn't necessarily know me as some sort of favor for someone else. That doesn't sound like a good sexual experience. You might be a little afraid to sleep with someone who is full on expecting to have their first orgasm ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, holy shit, that's a lot of pressure. So you said you'd blow my mind, did you? <laughs> um, well, my girlfriend said that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do my best. And, oh, oh no. Oh, I nodded. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, yeah. I don't know. An orgasm is a pretty intimate thing. Uh, and I think sometimes you really need to know someone to have a good one. Yeah. Could you give someone an orgasm that you like were set up with on an orgasm date? I don't know. It depends if your bodies are in sync. I, so, I, I, yeah, you could have orgasms like your first time with someone. But, but you, you have also... to be like attracted to them. Uh, maybe me, no, but maybe some people. <laughs> in general, in general, that sounds like a, a good rule. Yeah, of thumb specifically to the person, but you could always find yourself attracted to some aspect of a person, specifically True. the ass <laughs> <laughs> and the pecs. I'm lonely, <laughs> so lonely. Are you okay? Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm not dead. I wish I were. <laughs> Jesus. Let's move on. Um, all right, it's break time. Oh, tight, tight, indeed. Um, anything to to discuss uh, in your mind? To discuss, to talk about. Um, obviously, it could be anything. Yeah. So that's how easy it is to guide this conversation. Oh, Meredith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this episode's going to be called Meredith, right? Of course. Yeah. What else did we talk about? What else can we talk about? How about when you got rejected from your credit card that you applied for? Oh, yeah. My identity was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I got a stolen identity. Yeah. Somebody took me. Someone jacked your ID. For a ride. Yeah. And they got a computer, and uh, they ruined my credit. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> watch out for that, guys. Don't, uh... Does, can your credit be fixed? Yeah. You, they have to investigate the fraud. And they have to go through and delete it. Uh, but it takes about a month to do that. So what you can do is put a fraud alert on your credit card accounts. That way, whenever someone tries to open an account, they contact you and say, are you sure you want to open an account? That's Why not standard. Why don't they just do that all the time? I don't know. I guess, I guess it's extra work. That's crazy. So they charge you for it. They charge you to open a t- to have fraud that. alert. How much? Uh, I think it's $26,000. Jesus, that's not much. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it would be expensive. <laughs> uh, that's like a. T- I wonder if there's a word for that type of thing where they just they take things away and then charge you for it. It's kind of like TSA pre. Right. Like you never have to take off your shoes, and now you have to take off your shoes. But if you pay eighty dollars, then you don't have to take off your shoes anymore. Like, it's like, huh? Fuck you. So the te- <laughs> so the technology's there, and you guys aren't afraid of shoe bombs anymore. But you're still gonna make everyone else take their shoes off. <laughs> yeah. How dare you? Yeah. You're capitalizing on this. <laughs> I'm starting to think they put the shoe bomber there. Wait, did you did you get TSA pre? Did you do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I signed up for it. Do you have it? Uh-huh. You have, do you have like a card or something? No, no, you just have a number that you put in when you sign up for flights. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Dope. Fuck, I gotta get that. What <laughs> yeah. do I have to do? You have to go to an office and they scan your fingerprints and make sure you're not a known terrorist. And you're not? Well, I haven't found out yet. So you don't you haven't been approved for it yet? No. Well, it was a, it was a, attached to my credit score, so I was declined. <laughs> they said that I, I opened up a computer account and never paid it off. No, I think you get it within three weeks. But I was approved. Cool. You were trying to get the Starwood Preferred American Express. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you trying to? Why bring that up? Just, what does it matter? <laughs> just because I got approved for it yesterday. What? <laughs> you got approved for a credit card that I didn't? That's right. This is this is the I couldn't open a single credit card uh, a year ago. Yeah, remember that we talked about that on the podcast before. You I, were not approved for anything. I had to get the uh, the bare limit one from Bank of America. Yeah, that they literally had to give me because I had an account there. <laughs> they ki- the kind they give to sixth graders to teach them about what credit cards. <laughs> the kind are. that I never got when I was in sixth grade, so I had to get it when I was twenty eight. <laughs> Learn from our mistakes, people. Yeah, this is the real advice. Yeah, get put ide- uh, a fraud alert on your credits. Get TSA pre. <laughs> and get credit cards as early as possible. Build up that rating. There we go. It's going to help you in the long run. Yo, that actually reminds me of a little uh, rap song I came up with. Yo. 
<laughs> Yo, build up that rating, baby. All right, here it is. Okay. <laughs> build up your rating. <laughs> it's not that hard. You can get good credit if you get a card. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's not true. What? <laughs> if you get a card or otherwise, you can have good rating. <laughs> build up that rating. <laughs> This is like a, a terrible commercial for Experian. <laughs> Build up that rating. Let's see what else is on. <laughs> um, all right. Last question. Moving on. Whew. You think people will like or dislike the music thing? Let us know. <laughs> I, Tweet I, at us. Please don't. I don't think we can handle the hate. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if you Look, like we it, just won't do it again. All right? right? Just ask for feedback from people that liked it. If you loved the music stuff, please let us know. And, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Keep your hate to yourself. We are way too fragile to hear that kind of feedback. There we go. Uh, fourth question comes from Paul. Paul? Paul. Paul? Like they used a pole in their act or something? Paul. 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 Paul McCartney. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I recently moved into an apartment with two guys and have a bit of a hairy situation on my hands. When it comes to body hair, I am what you would call a grade A gorilla. While many males of the smoother variety may envy this fact, I regrettably despise my body hair and have spent the better part of my life going to great lengths to shave it off. When I was living with my parents, I would simply wait until they were out of the house, go bananas with my electric razor in the bathroom, and sweep it all up before they were any the wiser. This is where my problem begins. I hardly know any of my roommates, and as far as I could tell, they never leave the apartment. The electric razor is only meant to be used on dry skin, and so I can't simply do it while in the shower. Our bathroom doesn't even have a fan, so the sound of the razor would undoubtedly pierce through the entire apartment. How am I supposed to know my manscape? How am I supposed to do my manscaping in peace when they obviously know the monkey business I'm up to? How would I ever face their merciless mocking if they were to find out? Should I admit defeat and let myself transform into the ape I was always destined to be? Also, don't say that tons of ladies dig body hair because I know they don't. Cheers and toda, Paul. It's funny, like when you ha he's insecure about his body hair, so it really like. This is your whole world right now. Yeah. You think everyone will ridicule you if you're hairy, and you think everyone will ridicule you if you shave your hair off. No one's going to do either. Yeah, no one cares about you as much as you do. Right. The things you care everyone's about. Everyone's going to hate me. No one's going to think about you. <laughs> no one's everyone's going to love this. No one's going to think about you. <laughs> it's, that's not the way it works. What did you just do? <laughs> I felt a tickling on my nipple area, so I checked to see if there You're was an ant You're sitting here in there. your underwear right yeah. now, and you just, I was talking, <laughs> yeah. you silently leaned back, <laughs> lifted your shirt up above your nipple, and acted like it was normal. I like it. You just got done saying that nobody cares about you, nobody gives a shit about what you do, and then I just checked myself, and you... You're ridiculing me. I care a lot about what you do. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a, that's not normal. You're that's saying. not everyone, though. You know, like maybe one or two people are going to care about what you do. Okay. Maybe they're your roommates. Well, here's here's this question: If you can't shave in your house, where's the best place to shave? Well, I think is there a public shaving place you can do? Uh, why don't you just go back and visit your parents' house sometime and do it at home? Do you do it at home or, or a hotel? That's insane. But it is. it will solve his problem. It's a lot of money to book a hotel room. There's probably shitty hotels that you can get for like 50 bucks. Maybe. You could just always go to like a gas station bathroom and do it. Like you don't <laughs> care what anyone's thinking about you there. I'd rather get a, go to do it in a hotel. Yeah, well, not everyone has Starwood preferred guest credit cards. Neither that do, do I, dude. <laughs> Thanks for bringing it up. I think you could lock the door, turn on the shower, turn on the sink, f keep flushing the toilet. They will they will not hear the razor over that. They'll just think you're taking multiple shits in a row. You could do it outside late at night. Yeah. You could also like let it grow, see what's up, and or you could just try to get close to your roommates and be like, "I got to go shave every part of my body." Ha 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 ha. And then that's it. They might just think you're shaving your beard for a long time in there. They probably won't be like, what are you shaving? They, it's ambient noise. They won't even think about it. What about a friend's house? 
Is there a friend that you Fine. trust dearly? It doesn't matter, is what I'm saying. <laughs> do it at a hotel. Do it in your bathroom. Do it at your friend's house. Do it at your parents' house. Or don't do it. We don't care. It all depends, I guess. <laughs> as long as you shave tonight. Grab the guitar. <laughs> No, it's like <laughs> there's a hair on your body and it itches like me for you so get rid of it one desire to make it go away it's not easy to shave tonight so what you do is go to hotels.com cuz girl you know that hair's got to go and you wish it should be so So shave tonight Cut your hair right off <laughs> Tomorrow Tomorrow the hair will be gone Shave tonight Hair today gone tomorrow And fight the break of hair Cool um, so once again, if you liked the musical uh, component of this episode Please, please, please let us know uh, and if you didn't, tweet it at uh, a celeb. That... Tweet it at, at the real Paul Dano. <laughs> Only you will know how much you disliked it. Uh, so you're saying don't you don't care? I'm and nor saying should no he one care. Cares. No, yeah, of course. I think you're a beautiful person. I think you can shave if you so choose, and I think you can tell everyone that that's what you like to do. And I think you could let your hair grow like the wolf ape man that you are if you choose to do that, and people will, will accept you because you're beautiful on the inside. Where do you do it? Uh, where do I manscape? Yeah. I don't really shave. I mean, I... Well, you certainly, you trim. I trim in the shower, or in the in the bathroom. In the bathroom or the bathtub? Are you talking about, like, my pubes? Yeah. Oh, I trim my pubes with scissors over the toilet. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> Is that not normal? I think I'm going to be sick. Where do you do it? Uh, I do it at a gas station, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> with a pair of dull safety scissors. Uh, I use an electric razor. The same one you use on your face? Yes. Okay. And I do it in the bathtub. I think both of our methods are hygienic and effective. Well, here's what I actually do. I go to a park late at night. I get uh, as many children as I can <laughs> to gather around. <laughs> sort of a, an improvised bonfire of sorts. Oftentimes I will dress as a birthday clown. <laughs> <laughs> and much to the parents' chagrin, uh, mid-set, I will drop trowel, pull out an electric razor, and shave in front of the kitties. What I do instead of shave is I grab a tuft of pubes. I wait till they grow, let's say, three to four inches off the base, and I sort of yank them oh, off. Oh, God, that's yeah. our show. That's it. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, everybody. This, once again, was If I Were You. If you have your own questions that you need advice on, we promise not to write songs about all of them. But uh, we'll try to advise uh, as best we can. That email address, again, is if I were you show at gmail.com. Also, we open and close every episode with an all-new theme song. The theme song at the beginning was handcrafted by Brett Fields, who did all of uh, the music and words and instruments with his mouth. And the one at the end of this episode, a.k.a. right now, was written by Amer. That's A M E R from wow. Sydney, Almost Australia. Yeah, Amer. So uh, thanks, guys, and we'll be back soon. Later. If I were you in a sticky situation, I would bear my soul to Jay and Amir. Will they put you on blast? Or maybe they will tell you. Yo, do you? I can't see all this cheese. My whole expense. I'm begging, please preserve my anonymity. Oh, deep inside of me, preserve my anonymity. Oh, deep inside of me.
My name is Paul Shirley. And I am Justin Halper. We do a podcast called Short Corner. Paul is gone this week, so we had guest host Amir Blumenfeld from Jake and Amir in College Humor and their podcast, Rich. If I were you on podcast1.com. So are you a big NBA fan? Nope, never heard Fish. of it. Well, they just we- plopped me down on this chair and said, uh, talk sports, so I don't know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> no, no, I am a big fan. It was magic. Do you think Paul should even come back, Rich? Uh, why bother? Well, no, we miss Paul. We had him on the show, too. Find us at podcast1.com and let us make love to your ears.